Hello, um, welcome to Drop-in Diodes, and this is a USB to SATA adapter. Well, it's a U USB SATA, um, SATA to USB, or U USB to SATA, or SATA to USB. I don't, I don't know what you call it, but this this part connects to um, connects to a hard drive. There's a, there's a slot in its case. So my computer is broken right now, and I can't play any Kerbal Space program, so sorry to my new subscribers. So anyways, I'm trying to recover some files from an SSD, but then that thing needs 3.3 volts. But the only problem is, this thing does not have 3.3 volts on the SATA connector. It just isn't connected to anything. So, I'm gonna add 3.3 volts to it, so I can recover my files. Because yes, there, there will be KSP videos. I have some things recorded. Now onto the meat of the video. So first off, I'm going to very briefly reverse engineer the circuit. So this this thing actually requires external power, and it does use USB three. So this external power is 12 volts, and that 12 volts gets fed into this step down converter or something. I haven't measured the voltage of the step down converter, but it's probably five volts. And that 5 volts will also get fed into this 3.3 volt regulator. And yeah, there are, there's already 3.3 volts on this thing. So this will provide 5 volts and this would provide 3.3 volts. And to verify that, I'm going to power this thing. Oh. Okay. This, this thing over here will measure voltages. Trust me. I don't usually use this thing to measure voltages because it only has two decimal places, but it fits right on the camera. So first I'm gonna measure the output of this first part over here. And that's pretty easy to do. I can just measure across this capacitor. Now I can actually measure from the regulator itself. So Seems like this is the ground. This is backwards. You see this 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 is the possibly five volts going into this regulator right here. And this other side is the ground. And there we go. Damn it, there we go. Five volts. See? Five point zero two volts. And the output of the regulator itself is two point no three point twenty two. Can I even trust this thing? I don't know. But yeah, this three point three volt regulator will power this logic over here. What or maybe 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 this thing. But it does definitely power the LED. So I can just connect this 3.3 volts directly to the SATA. But I don't want to do that. Because this thing can only handle one amp. And I'm not entirely sure how much it takes to power an SSD. So... I'm going to use uh, another 3.3 volt regulator. I'm just gonna stick a new one onto this. So to put this new regulator somewhere on here, I'm actually gonna cut out a piece of perf board and then put the regulator on top of there. 
I'm gonna stick some capacitors on here as well. Oh, and also a heat sink. This thing might might get a little hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a, a piece of metal. I'm gonna stick it on the perf board and stick this thing to it. So this here is just a regulator and the capacitors I'm going to get from this thing. So, uh, if, you look just, if you look closely at these, there's these things. These are tantalum capacitors. And you see this one says 476. That's 47 times 10 to the power of 6 picofarads. Or 47 microfarads, which I think it's overkill for... How much do we need? I don't know how much we need, but it's, it's a capacitor. You know what? Yeah. It's a capacitor. Does it work? Probably. Like these, these are tantalum capacitors, and they are well known for exploding. But they, they're, they're, they're really small. And they don't need any liquid electrolytes or anything like that. So I'm gonna get my hot piece of metal from eBay. And remove one of these capacitors. This is a hot piece of metal from eBay. Um, take a closer look at this thing. How do I even grab it? How do I heat it up? I have to pick it out of there as well. So to re remove this thing, oh no! To, so to remove this capacitor, I'm going to use my hot piece of metal from eBay. And I'm also going to use the grabby thing. Uh, how do I do this anyways? So, I have to heat up both, both of these pads at the same time. And then I can just scoop it up. Maybe I don't even need the tweezers. I could just stick this to the side here. Just like... Just put like a lot of solder on the bottom of it. I think this thing might be coated. I think this thing might be coated with something. Some people, they like to coat the circuits to protect them from the elements or something like that. Let's just put salt on one pad, and we already have salt on this other pad, and then we can just stick a big blob of salt on the back. I don't care about using too much of the salt; it really sucks. I can't just bend it very slightly each time. Oh, get out of there, get out! Lift that thing up. Ah. Well, since I don't actually care about this board, since it's already a broken board, I can just like, can probably just like snap them right off. I'll just be way too bubble. Should I get just one or two? Maybe I should just use one. Just one for now. Yeah, that's all the... I'll do it. 
There we go. I think that's all we need. Now I kind of want to be sure that this capacitor can hold the charge. So I'm going to charge it. Uh, how should I go about doing this? So I could just use these two pins. I just not make it explode. And then I can measure the voltage across it. What is it? Yeah, there we go, it has something. So I guess it's a working capacitor. So I'm now going to cut the piece of metal into a like a heat sink shape. This is a very like precise process and it's very dangerous. So um don't don't, don't try this at home. There you go. About the board, or well, this perf board, what, is, what I think it's going to look like. Although actually the thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to stick this piece of metal down like this. On this regulator, go on like this. And the capacitor will go on like this. There you go. So I'm gonna scratch off some bits of this. This, this is the part that's going to stick on the perf board. Cause there, there, there's a coating on this metal. This thing is not going to solder well unless the coating was scratched off of the surface. And the regulator is gonna have to, it's gonna need a spot too. Well, this one is definitely a coating. the middle for this thing to fit over actually the whole thing into a much bigger area. And then I'm gonna put solder on all of these. Flux has jumped on my finger. Then 
It's heating up this paper quite a bit. And yeah, this is lead-free solder. I think it's it, it, it's harder to work with, but I, it's it's worth it for your health, I think. I'm gonna mount this onto the perf board. The thing is, the perf, the perf board is actually kind of old. This thing's gonna go on like this. So from here. Gonna stick the solder onto these ones. Stick solder on these ones. And there we go. Yeah. Clamp this down with like an alligator clip. Oh, this thing goes on four holes actually. Gotta put solder on these ones too. Hmm. The solder is shiny, I didn't remember. Pretty sure this, yeah, this is not the leaded stuff. I think when I work fast with it, it's shinier. Now, um, now this thing had become safe to touch. It cooled down pretty quickly. Well, it's supposed to be a heat sink, so that's a good thing. Um, now I'm just gonna clamp it down with a alligator. Align it nicely. And I'm gonna put solder on the edges. Should secure that down pretty well. And then the other side. Should clamp that down pretty well. a lot of solder on this part. Just gonna try to take some out. Looks pretty good. And now to mount the mount the voltage regulator. I'm gonna st stick some flux on it. You see this is just flux from the uh, from this thing. It's rosin paste flux. Rosin mil mildly activated. RMA. 
Hmm, OMA. What is what does this mean again? Vazen mildly activated. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, Vazen mildly activated is just less power, less aggressive on the metal, but there's less of it to have to clean off at the end. I'm going to use the same method of alligator clipping it down and heating it up. Well, actually, I should clip it down from the other side. No, oh, wait. Yeah, I'm just not going to clip it down. I'm just going to move it into place if it does get out of place That's a lot of solder. It's too much solder. It's not shiny. Why doesn't it look shiny? Oh, I, I know how to fix that. Now, one thing I remember about this solder is that if it cools down really fast, then it will end up shiny. So I'm just going to drop some water on it, heat it up and then drop water on it immediately. Yeah, yeah, you see like half the water droplet drop in half of it and this half is shiny and the other half is not shiny. That was unnecessary at the end. It moved a bit, but it's okay. And yeah. So it's a little shinier than before. The solder might crack, but uh, yes. It's like it needs a bit more solder on this side. Yeah, you know what, it's fine.
gonna bend these pins downwards. Then solder this bottom part here. Pick my solder on the iron. Actually, yeah, this, this is a this puff board has been exposed to air for a very short time. Put more flux on there. on one side. It's okay. I kind of want to test if this thing still works because I kind of abused a lot. I'm going to cut this perf board actually. See got the general shape laid out here. Hmm. It's still a little warm. Say one hole here. There we go. And then let's test it. So this thing experienced a bit of rapid cooling, so I'm going to test it to see if it still works. This is the input. This is the ground. And our meat. That's a probe. And the output shows... No, this is the ground. Actually, I just shorted it there. The output shows 3.25. And I think that's good. But there's no load across this. It needs... Like, the, the, there's no current going into the probe. It's not powering anything right now needs to be powering something to be able to measure the current properly not to measure the voltage properly not the, the positive and I can stack a resistor this is what? these exist? this thing is a what? this thing is a 2 kilo ohm resistor. Um, if I put it along the output, nothing happens. Need a big, need a smaller load. This is a 47 ohm resistor, which means there should be like 3.3 divided by 47 amps going through it. I think this might get warm. And yeah, you see the, the, the number jumps up to 3.3 .3 when I stick the resistor to it. See that? And yeah, it is getting a little warm on my fingers here. 3.33 3.3. Yeah, this thing doesn't have much resolution, doesn't it? I'm now going to uh, connect the capacitor. If only I can find it. I should give it some distance and mount it right here. 
It's a good place. I'm gonna put some flux on it first. On these two points. No, that's backwards. Really bad. This would cause an explosion. I am not Electro Boom. I don't want to cause an explosion because that would just be copying Electro Boom. Actually, the, the, the intro is one of these capacitors exploding. Like it says drop in diodes, but it's actually a capacitor. It's one of these tantalum capacitors. I don't think I'd want to even use a clamp. Actually, I just use the alligator clips. This time it has a wire on it. Actually, it's a bad idea. I'm just gonna get my hot piece of metal from eBay. This other side, just add lots of solder. And make a bridge. Done. Making bridges is for civil engineers, though. This is a different kind of bridge called the solder bridge. Ow. That's pretty hard. And this, this thing will now be jumped to the other side. So I need a wire or something. Well, to fit its janky appearance, I have to use a janky wire too. My box of wires, and I'm going to pick the... There we go, this is a janky wire. Well, because it's not actually a wire, it's the same piece of metal. Okay, no. This is too long. There we go. You might just need some flux. Precise flux application tool. Good enough. A bit of solder on one side. The heat's gonna transfer from one side to the other side very quickly. Very pretty because it's not it's not leaded. And I think that's it. Okay, I'm gonna test it one more time. This time everything is... Um... Oh, 
Don't tell me I put the capacitor backwards. I did not put that backwards. There you go. And the 47 ohm resistor. Rolled. Yep, all good. And if I remove the power, it will hold on to its charge for a little while. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I've actually cleaned off the board a bit because it was getting a little too terrible. And I'm actually gonna just cut one of these. And I'm gonna stick this down here. Actually, does this thing even fit in the board? How am I even gonna mount this? I'm gonna mount it like, like this on the board. And yeah, I'm going to stick this jumper to the side. But whatever, this is really close to the input. And then, okay. and, but first I'm going to have to trim the edges of the perf board. Uh, file it and make it look nice. Do this two walls as corners. I can end up cutting the capacitor there. Use a file. Next thing I'm going to solder is this jumper. So like I'm just gonna dip this directly into the flux. God damn it.
There's some good reasons to put another capacitor between the input and the ground, so I'm going to do that. I need a capacitor though. I'm gonna put it right in between these two pins here and here and here. Ah. Forgot about that. Just gonna cut the pins using a pin. I'll cut the pad by just cut the pad using a pin here. Now they should be separated from each other. Another capacitor in the middle. I'm not gonna attach the wires so it can connect to the SATA board. Looks horrible, but that works. And one more final test to see if it works. And it works. Or well, still works. Because I might have broken something in the process. It's possible that I might have broken something in the process. It's important to test it at the end. But it's not the end yet. It has to be mounted to the board. I'm going to uh, mount the thing to the board now. And I'm just gonna get some electrical tape, loop it around, and stick it on. This probably wouldn't last very long, or well, the electrical tape wouldn't last very long. I can just stick it on like right here. This is where I was planning to put it, anyways. There we go, and these are way too long. It's supposed to connect to the capacitor. 
Did you not? Positive and negative, the capacitor over here. Cut it here. Salt on the capacitor too. Ow. When I turn it on, this thing should still work. That's good. And there should be 3.3 .3 volts coming out of this wire. Ground on... Ground. This is just ground here. And the end of this wire should be 3.3 .3 volts. There we go, 3.25 as we expected. Just gonna thumb it off for a while. So I can move this wire towards the bottom. Just down the wrap this down the bottom. Miss the diagonal. Diagonal cut all the way there. To these three pins. Very last thing to solder. Okay, the last thing to solder. And that's it. It's done. I'm done with this. Three point three volts has been added. It can be disabled at any time.